the thing that a lot of people don't talk about in, in relation to gut health is stress. And to me, stress is the elephant in the room. Is that thing a lot of people maybe are so accustomed to it that they don't recognize how stress has a biophysical effect on their bodies. So it's very important part of, as part of a, any gut healing regimen. I focus on things that help you be in a more positive state of mind. Gratitude, meditation, maybe yoga. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. During a time of unknown with the COVID-19 virus, we get to choose to experience fear and panic, or we can choose differently. The choice is yours. Today, we get to make choices to lean into the good. Even now, at this very moment, we can still choose to feel good and focus on love and gratitude. We get to choose to focus on where we want to show up and what we can do to support our communities and those that we love. And I want to share some simple and easy ways to really show up for the people that matter most to you. Sending texts to friends, family, and coworkers, creating meaningful conversations with your family at home, throwing mini impromptu dance parties with your favorite music, checking up on neighbors, being the person helping and supporting, taking only what you need from the stores, taking care of yourself by focusing on self-care and going inward, being the light and the hope that people need right now, and again, leaning into that good. Now, I want to share with you what we are choosing to do at this time. We have chosen to socially isolate in our home in an attempt to flatten the curve, or in other words, spread out the number of people getting sick. Now, you know that if we all got sick at once, it would be a strain on a healthcare system and it would prevent others from getting the care that they need. So Alex and I are being very mindful and we are staying at home. But while at home, I am committed to digging into research and supporting your healing journey every step of the way. I am more committed than ever to give you what you want and what you need for your immune system, your hormones, your gut, and everything in between. Now, we're going to be focusing on the gut today because it is the immune system epicenter. And that's why I brought on my number one gut doctor, Dr. Vincent Pedre, to shed light on the organ in charge of our immune system. And as I mentioned before, it is the gut. Now, Dr. Vincent Pedre has been on the front line supporting patients in New York City as the COVID-19 continues to spread in that area. You may have heard that the gut wall houses 70% of the cells that make up your immune system. You may not have attributed digestive issues to things like allergies, arthritis, autoimmune conditions, things like irritable bowel, acne, chronic fatigue, mood disorders, autism, dementia, cancer, and many more. Many diseases seemingly unrelated are actually caused by gut problems. And yes, if our gut is out of alignment, it's going to impact the way that our immune system is working on other parts of the system, including the respiratory system. Gut health literally affects the entire body, especially how our immune system functions and responds. Now consider the important jobs your gut performs regularly, including breaking down food, absorbing nutrients, keeping out toxins, and producing nutrition. That's a lot of jobs. For optimal immunity, detoxification, and nourishment, your gut must be functioning at peak capacity. So today, that's exactly what we're going to focus on, is key tips and strategies to set you and your gut up for success, because I know you are wondering what you can truly do to boost your immune system right now when there are still a lot of unknowns. Now, Dr. Vincent is on the show today to go deeper into the facts surrounding this virus and how we can support our immune system through our gut. But before I bring Dr. Vincent Pedre on, I want to take a moment and quickly celebrate you. Because despite our general concern for this virus, I want to honor your wins. Every day, I hear from new listeners who are recommended by you. And one such listener is Steph. She reached out to me on Instagram, and let me tell you, I love to meet you guys on Insta, so definitely check me out at Dr. Marisa there. Here's what Steph had to say. 
Thank you for your episodes on estrogen dominance. I have been looking for solutions to my symptoms that you mentioned in your episode, and the assessment you provided assured me that's exactly what I've been dealing with for a long time. I started the diet changes and focusing on my liver, and over the last month, I have felt so much better. I was almost going to get an ablation surgery for my heavy bleeding, but now I don't feel like I need it anymore. The bleeding has significantly decreased, and the intensity is half of what it was. I hope that you cover more topics on perimenopause because I could use a lot more guidance. I think we all could. Well, thank you so much for your epic win, Stephanie. I am so happy to shout you out today, and I am so glad that you are getting the support that you need when it comes to estrogen dominance, when it comes to your liver, and when it comes to the heavy bleeding that you were experiencing. Now, as a way to just love up on you today, if you are listening, Steph, I would love to gift you a signed copy of the EO Hormone Solution book with a little note from me. There's so many great recommendations in there for your hormones, especially perimenopause. So just reach out to me on Instagram at Dr. Marisa and we will get it sent to you ASAP. Now, if you are listening, welcome to this episode. And if you want to check out the episodes on estrogen dominance, they were episodes 161 and 167. They happened a little bit earlier in the year. And ooh, those episodes are so good. They are absolutely worth listening to right now. And if any interview in this podcast has helped you in any way, I would be honored to shout you out too. You can reach out to me via Insta, Facebook, or simply review this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you love to plug into. That way together, we are changing the way women think about their bodies, empowering them with the knowledge to become the CEO of their health. Let's jump into this critical conversation with Dr. Vincent Pedre, but before I bring him on, I wanna quickly sing his praises. Dr. Vincent Pedre is the medical director of Pedre Integrative Health and the founder of Dr. Pedre Wellness. He's been in New York City since 2004 in private practice. He also has a certification in yoga and medical acupuncture. He believes that the gut is the gateway towards excellent health. For this reason, he wrote the book, Happy Gut, the cleansing program to help you lose weight, gain energy, and eliminate pain, which helps people resolve their digestive and gut-related health issues. Let's bring Dr. Vincent Pedre onto the show. Welcome to the Essentially You podcast, Dr. Vincent Pedre. How are you doing today? I am great, Maritza. How are you? So happy to be here. Me too. Oh my goodness. Here you are. You are in New York City, kind of the epicenter of all the action right now. And I'm in California. We're on the opposite sides of the country, but the coronavirus is in both of our states very highly. And you are my go-to gut doctor. And so I'm really excited to have you come on today, not only to talk about what a lot of us are thinking regarding this new virus, but also what we can do to support our gut, because you know better than anyone that most of the immune system is residing in the gut. And what we do for the gut really dictates how our immune system functions inside of the body. Exactly. I mean, the gut is like ground zero for the immune system. It's 70% of your immune system is all along the line of your gut. And we're going to dive into it. But if your gut is out of order, if it's disordered or it's inflamed, or you have what we call leaky gut, then your immune system will be so distracted fighting off what is coming through the gut, including inflammatory chemicals, substances that can trigger an immune response and inflammatory signals throughout the entire body, then your body is not going to be as prepared to fight off a virus that's coming through the respiratory system. So one way that I talk about it is like if you're fighting a chronic war in your gut, like the war in Afghanistan, then you're not going to be apprised of an invader coming through another country or another part. You know, if your body's all these different zones, So you don't want to have your defenses all occupied in one zone and not be able to pay attention to something that might come in through another potential risk area, which for a lot of people, you know, something like the coronavirus and viruses in general and the influenza virus. I mean, this has been happening for centuries and they're respiratory born illnesses. So they're transmitted through respiratory droplets. So you're going to inhale it. The first part of the infection is going to happen inside your nose, and then it's going to move into your lungs. And then it becomes 
kind of a systemic thing as your body mounts an immune response. Mm, that makes so much sense. Tell me, you know, you would know better than I do as well on this one is, you know, we talk about, okay, if someone's dealing with gut dysbiosis or leaky gut, or they're dealing with IBS, what are the statistics? You know, how many of us are really dealing with that? Because I wager to guess a lot. What I find is difficult about these statistics is that one, there is no good test for leaky gut syndrome. Mm -hmm. Two, we know people are taking either over-the-counter medications or they're being prescribed medications that alter the gut environment in a way that can increase the risk for leaky gut. And those include things like over-the-counter ibuprofen or NSAIDs, as we call them. Those increase the permeability of the gut. The other thing that people take so widespread now because they're over the counter is anti-acid medications. So like what we call proton pump inhibitors that are now available over the counter, but also prescribed to patients by doctors. And in fact, just think about this statistic that the second most common medication prescribed worldwide are proton pump inhibitors that lower stomach acid for the treatment of quote unquote reflux or hyperacidity, which we can talk about how that's actually incorrect for most people. And then third, how many people are on antibiotics or given antibiotics? So I would say that, you know, we can only extrapolate that the number of people with leaky gut, I would guess, is probably at least 70% of the world population. Now, the number of people who suffer from IBS, the projections are anywhere between 10 and 30% of the US population has some sort of gut complaint. But if you start talking with people, like how many of your friends, like if they really are honest and you start, you know, maybe you open up and you say, I've got, you know, sometimes I get some bloating, I get some constipation, diarrhea. A lot of people, have some sort of gut complaint going on. So I think this is much more widespread. And because there's not good testing, especially for leaky gut, we can only extrapolate that the numbers are, are huge based on what people are exposed to that can increase gut permeability and including pesticides in food or genetically modified crop that's sprayed with glyphosate. So there's a lot of risk factors environmental risk factors that we are exposed to and throw in stress and everybody's stressed about viruses, communicable disease, like what's going to happen with the, the stock market. All this stress is like an attack on your gut. And when you're stressed, your body produces all sorts of, of neurotransmitters, epinephrine, norepinephrine that gets your heart rate going, gets your blood pressure up, but also has a negative effect on the gut microbiome and will increase gut permeability. So there's a lot of things at play here. And I think a lot of people aren't aware that they're either not aware they have gut issues because they're either not really paying attention or they think they don't, but they have other systemic symptoms like asthma, allergies, migraines. So they sometimes gut symptoms present in other parts of the body and not necessarily in the gut itself. Absolutely. So true. And so, you know, what I, what I really wanted to get at is that as, as we are trying to arm ourselves and protect our immune system, the gut needs to be a part of that repertoire. The gut needs to be a part of that equation. You, ha you have to think about the gut is like your foundation. If you're building a house, you don't build the house until you've created the foundation, right? Or the house could just sink right down after hill. you build yeah. it. So you have to figure out how do you create a strong foundation first, and then you build the house around that. In the same way, you have to create a strong gut environment. And from that, you're also building a stronger immune response, an immune system that is not distracted doing things that it really shouldn't be doing so that it can actually sense an invader when it's coming in like a virus or flu or even an infection that might be coming through the gut itself. Mm, exactly. I was going to say, or other, other infections like mold or candida or parasites, things of that nature that actually go straight to the gut. That gives us so much clarity. So foundational, because I know a lot of people are trying to figure out lots of different advice out there about what they can do to boost their immune system. And I, I absolutely 100% agree with you that the gut needs to be the foundation. And I just want to mention, because, and just a side comment, I didn't, I didn't mention also the gut is involved in hormone balance as well. Yes. 
That's what my segue. <laughs> I know. I, I want to mention that everybody is just so focused outward. You know, we've got like binoculars on looking at viruses, influenza, all these things coming in from the outside, but no one's talking about the terrain, the inside. And it's really about the terrain. And even supposedly Louis Pasteur is famous for saying at the end of his life that it was, it's not the germ, it was the terrar, the terrar, which is the terrain. So it's really not the bug, it's the terrain internally. And we know, you know, everybody's scared of having a severe reaction to one of these infections. And the, who are at most at risk? The people who are most at risk are people who have immunosuppression, people with chronic disease who are going to be immunosuppressed, the elderly who by nature can be immunosuppressed. It's really a matter of the terrain and being able to regulate your immune system properly. And the way to do that is through the gut. Let's talk about the terrain. And I want to quickly just segue on connecting it to hormones. You know, this podcast, although we are focusing so much on the immune system and really providing you, everyone listening, with, with information that you care about right this moment, which has a lot to do with this virus. But also, we want to talk about hormones because at the end of the day, when we talk about foundation, this is the foundation for our hormones, for our immune system for our metabolism. I mean, everything is coming from the gut. So talk to me a little bit about a brief, the brief connection to hormones as well, because I just want to, I want to just bring that in. Absolutely. I mean, we know that a lot of hormone metabolites go through the gut and that we also depend on the gut. For example, thyroid hormone uh, is secreted mostly by the thyroid in the form of T4. And you have to think of T4 as more, more of like an inert form of thyroid hormone. And for everyone who doesn't know what the thyroid is, I'm sure your listeners do by now, the thyroid is the master hormone that controls your metabolism. And for you women out there, you're all concerned about your thyroid if you're gaining weight and you don't know why. So thyroid is very important in regulating weight. But the T4 that's secreted by the thyroid, that's about 93% of what thyroid makes, is really not the active form. It has to be converted to T3. 60% of that happens in the liver, which to me, the liver is connected with the gut, very important organ of detoxification and, and biotransformation. But 20% of it is actually secreted into the gut, converted by gut bacteria from T4 to T3, then gets reabsorbed back into the body where the T3 can have its action. And that is pretty amazing. And I mean, we are true symbiotic beings, so we cannot function without a healthy gut flora. The other thing that's really important is the circulation of estrogen. Estrogen gets metabolized, removed from the body by the liver, excreted through the bile. And when it gets to the gut, if you have an an imbalance of good and bad bugs that we call dysbiosis. You can have bugs that actually can release the anchor that's used to remove estrogen metabolites from the body, and your estrogen will be released again in the gut and can recirculate back into the body. And we're seeing, an, I think, an epidemic of women who are estrogen dominant, have too much estrogen, not enough progesterone, and probably this is one of the problems with that, you also have to think of the exposure to things like xenoestrogens, like in plastic and makeup, all that stuff. Even with sugar too. I, sugar has, you know, creates an imbalance with our liver that can also lead to a sluggish liver for estrogen dominance and can also impact the gut as well. So a lot of different ways in which we see this epidemic for women with estrogen dominance. Well, and you don't think of, a lot of people don't think about this, but insulin itself is a hormone. It's a hormone signal. And when you eat too much sugar, you're exposed to high fructose corn syrup. The result in the liver is that you develop insulin resistance. And then that insulin resistance becomes body-wide. So basically what that means is your insulin signal cannot be heard by your cells. So in a way, your cells are becoming deaf to the insulin signal. And when that happens, your, what does your body do? What would anybody do? They jack up the volume. So your pancreas is just going to say, okay, you're not listening. 
I'm going to secrete even more insulin, but way more too much insulin is not good because it causes you to put fat on in your belly, on your liver, in your liver as well. It causes fatty liver and it perpetuates a problem that can lead to heart disease and heart attack for both women and men. So I'm glad you brought that up. And also, you know, people, a lot of people are drinking diet drinks and thinking that those are good for them. But we know that these artificial sweeteners actually create alterations in the gut flora in an unfavorable way that then leads to this whole cascade I just spoke about of insulin resistance, where your body starts producing too much insulin. And you get into this cycle of creating more fat in the middle. And guess what? The fat also makes you more insulin resistant. So the further in you get, you're, you're creating processes that just dig you deeper and deeper into that fat gaining hole with your body, not able to hear the insulin signal. Exactly. Ex- and not, I mean, this not is to all, mention, not, to, not to mention, not to mention, in case you weren't concerned already about your gut, let's just add a little bit more. Since we're also talking about the immune system, sugar stuns white blood cells for six hours. They cannot function for six hours after they're exposed to sugar. So sugar is really bad for your immune system. I'm so glad that you mentioned that. That's what I've been talking about. It's been my conversation talk track. You know, everyone is plummaging the stores and they're taking, you know, a lot of us are taking dry goods. And I want to talk a little bit about what does it look like to protect our gut, even in a quarantine, because I know people are, are stocking up on, on foods that may not serve. Like I went to the grocery store the other day and all of the frozen pizzas were gone, <laughs> but the produce aisle looked pretty good. So I want to talk no. a little bit about that. <laughs> I went to Whole Foods the other day and 75% of everything that was in the dry goods uh, areas was gone, including pasta, pasta sauce, but all the greens were there. And I'm like, great. I, I have stuff I can eat. I mean, we Absolutely. can even take, people don't think about this, but we could take fresh greens and freeze them put them in bags and freeze them and save them for later. So your freezer during a quarantine is your best friend because you can put a lot of healthy things in the freezer that will stay good for a while and eat fresh greens, peas, broccoli, cauliflower, all those things, which by the way, the frozen section was also sold out at Whole Foods. But people have to remember, you can create your own frozen food. Yeah, buy we fresh are doing food that. and freeze it. Mm-hmm. We have bought we bought a ton of cauliflower, broccoli, frozen. We bought berries because all of all of the frozen section was gone, and so we just ended up buying all the fresh version of it and then cutting it up and freezing it. And so, yes, absolutely possible for everyone and all of us when it comes to you know making sure that we're getting all those gut healing foods. Most importantly, right now, because the store, yeah, we just we had ran to the store this morning really early. And the produce section was still thriving. And I was like, okay, great. Going to get more greens, going to get more carrots, more cauliflower. And so I just want to speak to, I know a lot of us are stocking up for, you know, whatever's to come, but you know, there's still access. We still have some access to produce, which I think is so important. I know we're going to talk about that. And I want to mention also that, and of course, if you're looking at produce, Try to get organic when you can, especially things like lettuces, greens that are so exposed to pesticides, anything that has a thin skin like apples, for example, but they're not really in season right now, but those are going to be higher pesticide. So in California, you can get oranges, for example, that have a thicker skin and that, you know, if you need to budget yourself between organic and non-organic, then you can buy things that are non-organic if they have a much thicker skin. But the other thing I want to mention is that, and what's healthy for the gut and actually reduces inflammatory signals in the body and something that people could practice now is intermittent fasting. So not just eating, but the time when you're not eating between meals is very important for resetting things. Like we were talking about insulin sensitivity, well, fasting increases insulin sensitivity. It lowers your blood sugar it reduces inflammation in the gut. It can help to start to rebalance the gut microbiome. So it's kind of important to also think about that and not panic if you don't have enough to eat right now, because you should also be thinking of fasting as your friend. 
Absolutely. We intermittent fast ourselves. We do a 14 to 16 hour fast most days. And I thought, wow, this is perfect timing. You know, we already don't already, we skip a meal, we skip breakfast. That just was like, okay, that's easy. We can keep doing that. So an opportunity for us to all consider even a 12 hour fast, a 14 hour fast, boosting up to a 16 hour between dinner and breakfast the next day or, or kind of the lunchtime. So something to consider. Absolutely. I want to segue, I want us to go into what we can do for the gut. So we've established one, that the foundation is the gut, two, that a lot of people are struggling, whether you know it or not, or whether you're willing to admit it or not, you got some gut stuff going on. And we don't want the immune system to be distracted by gut issues if we've got a bigger player in our sights right now, right, as this virus. So talk to me, because here's, it's such a great opportunity for all of us. We're, we're home, we're going inward. It's time to focus on our health. It's time to focus on our well-being. And that we are getting educated on what really matters. And one thing I want to speak to, Vincent, really quickly is this is really an opportunity for all of us to recognize how important the immune system is and to recognize how important the gut is and to potentially make some, some great changes, creating a new normal around how we take care of our bodies. And that's what I'm hoping. That's why I'm excited for this conversation is what can we do? How can we educate people to look at their bodies in a different way when we have this new threat on our heels? We have to start with what you put into your body. You know, because I like to say that your gut, the, the gut is your biggest inside outside world. It's your biggest exposure to the external world through the foods that you eat. So choosing to eat clean foods, organic, pesticide free, or if you're eating meat, then it's grass fed, it's uh, free range, hormone free, um, not given antibiotics. And you really have to watch out for things that have been grain fed and also if you're eating fish, you want to eat wild caught fish. So it's really first about clean eating. And in my book, Happy Gut, I talk about my gut care program. And care is an acronym basically for cleanse, activate, restore, and enhance. And cleansing, the first step is kind of really key for building the gut foundation because it's really about taking out the things that are inflammatory, the foods that are inflammatory for the gut, and introducing a lot of the good stuff. So like healthy fats, lots of greens, berries, even some root vegetables like uh, sweet potato, butternut squash that are higher in fiber, uh, but removing really inflammatory foods. So like wheat, gluten, dairy, soy, corn, peanuts, lots of legumes. And I even recommend people who have some sort of inflammatory condition, autoimmune disease to explore whether removing nightshades from their diet might be helpful. And sometimes it's good to do an elimination diet. My program is 28 days long to reestablish this gut balance. And then Activate is all about reintroducing the right types of enzymes, the right nutrients that can help the gut feel better, more balanced, improve your digestion. Restore is about the gut microbiome, restoring it through probiotics and prebiotics. And prebiotics are like non-digestible carbohydrates and foods that we call fiber. And there's a lot of foods that you might commonly eat that are rich in prebiotics like garlic, onions, there's Jerusalem artichoke, there's dandelion greens that are, I think pretty soon we're going to be in spring. So dandelion greens are going to be abundant. Everywhere. Great way to, to really help the good bacteria in your gut flourish. And then the last step is enhance and it's about healing the gut lining. So it's really about reversing that increased gut permeability through nutrients like DGL, which is derived from licorice, and L-glutamine, which is an amino acid that's been studied. Study after study, including in patients with inflammatory bowel disease, show that using L-glutamine can help with restoring gut integrity and even help reverse a, an exacerbation of ulcerative colitis for example, by using high doses of L-glutamine, but that works for everyone who has IBS. And that whole thing is a 28-day program. And you can really, I feel, start to reprogram your gut in 28 days. And the other thing I talk about, which I think is super important and really worth mentioning, because it's always, what I say is the elephant in the room, is everybody focuses on what do I eat? What do I not eat? What supplements do I take? 
But the thing that a lot of people don't talk about in, in relation to gut health is stress. And to me, stress is the elephant in the room. It's that thing. A lot of people maybe are so accustomed to it that they don't recognize how stress has a biophysical effect on their bodies. So it's very important part of, as part of a, any gut healing regimen, I focus on things that help you be in a more positive state of mind. Gratitude, meditation, maybe yoga, you know, kind of finding the things that get you into a more meditative, relaxed state. If it's weaving or painting or just getting outdoors, going for a hike, getting out in nature, which by the way, now getting outdoors, I know they're, they're talking a lot about social isolation for this, but back in the 1918 flu pandemic, the way they got people better was putting them outdoors and letting them get sunshine. So as long as you're not like the worst thing is crowded indoor spaces with not good air circulation, outdoors with air circulation, sun, fresh air, that's better for us. Absolutely. Yeah. We are walking our neighborhood. We are heading to the beach. You know, we're not, there's no big crowds at the beach. Everyone's just like walking in their own little, like their own little two, their group of two. And it's just, it is nice to get outside. It is about to be springtime or, you know, stepping into spring. And so being outside, I think is always good for us. You know, our bodies, our circadian rhythm really depends on it. Yeah. So I think that's an important part of, and we know that just getting out in nature lowers cortisol levels And honestly, I've been doing this work now for over 10 years. And what I find that if you do everything right, but you don't address the stress component, you're not going to resolve the gut issues. And like I said in the beginning, stress is like an attack on your gut. It's going to short circuit your attempts to improve your gut permeability or reverse leaky gut. So it's always, for me, it's important to do diet supplements and mindset and really work on kind of the way that you hold stress in your body. And that's, that's something that's key and important, no matter whether there's an epidemic, stress about financial stress, everybody has stress of different sorts, even commuting stress, you know, road rage. You know, so it's important to balance that out um, at all times, regardless of what's going on. Agreed. I absolutely agree. It's one of those, it's that intangible. And I know a lot of people are feeling that right now. They're feeling a little bit of stress. They're feeling a little bit of panic and bringing in mindfulness is going to be so key for us in general, just for peace of mind and feeling like we're, you know, that we're grounded. It's such a great time as we're social distancing to actually go inward and kind of focus on you for the moment. Now with us being socially distanced, maybe we're in our homes and we're locked up. Is it possible to, to do the program, to do the, the care program at this moment? Absolutely. Look, um, we make it easy. And actually, because if people are worried about having enough food, part of the program is a meal replacement. We do it for breakfast with a protein smoothie that we've created, which is actually not just a hypoallergenic plant-based protein, but also it's got all sorts of nutrients to help the body cleanse and detox, which is really important part of the program. So we put together this 28-day cleanse kit that comes with everything that you need with the meal replacement protein powder that you would do for breakfast. And we're going to create, we're going to have an offer for you guys, for everybody who's listening. And I think you can add that to the show notes. Absolutely. uh, It'll be in the show notes for sure. For the next 10 days, we're going to give everyone 20% off the 20 day cleanse from when this episode goes live. And it's kind of our way of trying to help as many people as possible, strengthen their immune system, create a firmer foundation. And really, um, through the process, what I hear from people who have done it, not just having better gut health and not feeling bloated, gassy, women saying they don't look like they're pregnant by the end of the day anymore, but also people just feeling really grateful because it helps them reset their uh, relationship with food. And coming out of it, you can have healthier eating habits because of the way the program is designed. The cool thing is, which I'm really excited about, although we're not on Android yet, but we have an, we have an Apple Store app for Happy Gut 
that is free for anybody who gets the 28 day program and the app has the entire program on it. It tells you how to do it. And it also will send push notifications and reminders for you to do the steps that are part of the program. So it's kind of really cool because it's then you can have support through your phone. And we also have a happy gut group on Facebook that people can join. It's a private group um, to get support while they're doing the cleanse. Uh, but it's kind of our way of trying to help people get through this time and also addressing the bigger issue, which is regardless of what's going on now in the present with this coronavirus, as I started at the beginning, the three main reasons that people are suffering from increased gut permeability have nothing to do with the pandemic. And it's something that's happening every day and is widespread all over the U.S. and worldwide because of the types of medications and over-the-counter drugs that people take that disturb the gut environment. Mm. I love it. Thank you so much. So I love that this is doable when we are social distancing inside of our home. I love that it's all put together and I love that we get a discount. Woo -woo. So, and I, and it's available for the next 10 days. So you guys, I will have it in the show notes, click the link. And I will tell you from personal experience, I've been a dear friend and a colleague of Dr. Pedre's for many, many years. And I've seen the transformations that he's had with his patients. He's helped friends and family of mine. And so I just want to speak to the work that you do and how powerful and effective this program is. And every single one of us needs a reset. We absolutely need a gut reset, um, especially at a time where our immune system is so, so critical to be working, you know, 100% for us. Thank you so much. Thank you for those words. So appreciated. Anything, anything you want to leave us with before we take off today? I, th <laughs> I think. I think the thing that I want to leave people with is just to realize um, how important the gut is as the foundation to so many pieces of health. And if people have symptoms that they haven't been able to figure out in their bodies, where it's joint inflammation, autoimmune disease, headaches, post-nasal drip, symptoms that you wouldn't think are related to gut health. Think about it now from the perspective that maybe it's your gut that's out of balance and that's why your body is showing you these other symptoms. And even like we talked about hormone balance as well, that if your hormones are out of whack, also give thought to the possibility that it could be coming from your gut and it may be time to do a reset and rethink the way that you're eating and I really want people to think of it as more of a lifestyle choice and a pro health choice than rather than it's a diet that you do and then you go back to your old ways. Yeah, no more, no Chick fil A, no going back to here. <laughs> <laughs> I had a. <laughs> Uh, one of my patients was like, can I go back to Chick-fil-A? I'm like, no, you cannot go. You feel so great. Why would you want to go back? I know this on off phenomenon, you know, I really, that's part of uh, what I do in the program is to get people to focus on how they feel every day. And for me, it's a clear choice. I mean, this is why I do this. And Maritza, you know me, I work out, I eat healthy, cook at home. Um, I, I walk my talk because I think like, how could I be up here and preach to people if I'm not doing the same thing? And what made it super easy for me is that I just made a choice of how I want to feel every day. And when you want to feel good every day, then it's really easy choice to look at that pizza and pass on it because you know that after you eat it an hour or two later, or even the next day, next you're, not day. Gonna feel, Ooh. you're not gonna feel so good. No, no, your, your body never, never asked for that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need it? Choose what's good for your health and put your health as the highest priority. And then it makes the choices really easy. It's not a deprivation. It's a, it's a positive choice for the betterment of your health. So you will never feel deprived if you put your health as the highest priority. I love it. That is powerful. That's what I'm talking about. Well, Dr. Vincent, thank you so much for coming on. And I can't wait for this. I can't wait for everyone to jump on this program. I think you, that connecting in with how I want to feel is so powerful. And, and this is the exact thing that people need to do to get their bodies back on track. Thank you. Thank you again for having me on. It is always such a pleasure to be here with you, Maritza. Absolutely. You too. 
Bye. I cannot tell you how grateful I am to know that Dr. Pedre took time away from seeing patients on the front line in New York City to share with us ways in which that we can fully protect our immunity with gut loving recommendations. Many of the recommendations are available to you in the form of foods, herbs, pre and probiotics. And if you missed any of those, definitely go back and listen in on the recommendations that Dr. Pedre had to share for each and every one of us. But if you really wanna dig deep and you've got the time to really figure out what's going on with your gut, I highly, highly recommend his signature program because that is where the magic happens. If you are ready for a gut reboot to rebuild your gut microbiome and support your immune system, the Happy Gut Program is a great foundation. And now that we've got the time, it's worth checking out, especially with his generous 20% off discount. Now I'm gonna have the link to the program in the show notes for episode 177. I know that the discount is already built in, so you are all set there. All you have to do is go to drmarisa.com slash podcast or go to episode 77 and the links will be all set up for you to go and click and start the program. Thank you so much for stopping by and listening in to the Essentially You podcast. I am jumping back on with a solo episode next week to celebrate the second anniversary of the Essentially You podcast. Whew, where has the time gone? I can't believe it's already two years. And I wanted you to know that I'm gonna be sharing a very vulnerable episode with you, but I believe it's a conversation that we need to have more of more often. So I'm excited for the next episode here on the show where I'm going deep into something really uncomfortable But again, I know that it's the kind of conversation that women need to be having more of. So until the next episode, I hope that you are loving up on your family, supporting your immune system, and feeling very safe where you're at right now. Until then, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.